Hi, Chair. Nice to see you again, Kate. Nice to see you as well. There's so much going on up here that I there wanted is. to have you on to talk about. And one of the subjects is UHIP, and this is something that you've been fighting for oversight over to see improvements for wait times uh, and make sure that it's implemented correctly. We just had the special master Deming Sherman on our show this week talking about what he's found on the food stamps side of things. Today, we also published the 40-page application mm -hmm. in paper that people are still required to fill out. Where are things currently from your vantage point as oversight chair overseeing this program and, and forcing improvements? Okay, I'm ready to say as chair of oversight, at this point, I am ready to call this project an abject moral and financial failure. A financial failure in terms of the citizens who are paying for it and a moral failure in terms of the citizens who need the services. I don't know what else to say. Um, we are having a meeting next Thursday with Deloitte. Deloitte is coming in. I expect Secretary Bean to come in. And um, I know in one of our last conversations, we talked about uh, an RFP going out for the maintenance of this, of this platform, mm. of this software program, once we get it up and running. So my next question to Secretary Bean, well, if it's true what the special master is saying, that it can never be fixed, what's our next step? And we're, ha we're half a million into it already. So talk with folks when you have Deloitte in next week. Again, what exactly you plan on asking them in terms of what they've been doing in terms of trying to fix the system. Tell, tell our viewers what you're going to ask. Well, not being a technical person, I'm going to leave those kinds of technical questions to some others on the committee who are more technical than I. But as I just said to you, my next step is, okay, so if it can't be fixed, Mr. Secretary, if that's true, what are your plans to do next? And I certainly don't expect the taxpayers to spend another half billion, even though Deloitte isn't getting paid. As I said, it's just an abject failure. And to your point about that 40-page um, application. Yes, paper application. Paper <laughs> applications. I have had a conversation with Deloitte because constituents have called me with some concerns about filling that out. It's, it's not an easy form to fill out. Um, and Deloitte, in fact, has provided some sample applications from some other states that are like seven or eight pages. They did share that information with Director Courtney Hawkins. She and Secretary Bean did indicate that they would look at those other samples, but it will mean some policy changes. And I noticed on your website that they indicated it'll mean approval by the federal government. Mm -hmm. But if it's been approved in, in other seven states... Seven or eight pages in other seven states. Seven or eight pages. And if so, if other states have gotten it approved by the federal government, I can't see why Rhode Island would have a problem getting the same approval. So I'm just... It's totally disgusted with the whole project, Kate. It'll be two years in September. Well, actually August, because they launched this in, I remember specifically, July of 16, and it just blew up within a month. So here we are going on almost two years, and it's been promises. It'll get better. We can fix it. We can save money. Oh, and by the way, I guess we're not going to save money because the new people we've brought on to hire, they don't see getting rid of them anytime soon. Well, that's one of the issues, and we talked with Deming about that. At the outset, they had let, as we know, staff go because they thought there were going to be cost savings. Now we're looking again at what these costs are. So protecting constituents, protecting taxpayers, mm -hmm. and then looking at ways to continue to improve the program sound like your goals for overseeing Those, those have are my goals, but it, it's, it, it just feels like the, the, I'm chasing, trying to herd cats at this point. That, that's the, the, the best way I can put it that, that people can relate to. There's just so much wrong with everything, and nothing is getting fixed. We brought in a special technological guru. He was supposed to be the answer to everything. We've had a number of things that were supposed to be the fix. We have yet to see the fix. Well, we're going to keep an eye on that hearing taking place next, next week, Thursday. next yes. Thursday. But something that took place this week, approval of some animal welfare legislation yes. that is important to you, going to the Senate now, talk with folks about this animal welfare legislation. One thing I've learned in my years as a legislator, Kate, is that people care about their animals. And I always tell the, fisc the quick, fast story about when I first got here. There's been a really a, a, a seismic shift. When I first got here 12 years ago, a legislator who's no longer with us told me that I should cool it on the animal bills because I wouldn't be taken seriously. So I kind of backed off for a while, and I know I disappointed the animal Someone welfare. Someone who's no longer here? No longer here. <laughs> so, um, but the second time I campaigned, I started to pay attention. There were dogs barking at every door. People offered me kittens to take home. So I kind of said, you know what, be your own person. And I came here with a love for animals, and I know that people love the animals. So it was a well-publicized um, situation next door to Kent Hospital. 
the owner of some pit bulls, was calling them hunting dogs. And they were out this winter. I think we had the long stretch of single digit temperatures. December and January, there were several weeks of single digit temperatures. And for the activists who have been out there, and I've been out there to see the site myself, and anybody who's driven by Kent Hospital, if you stand in front of Kent Hospital, it's the area to the immediate right where these dogs were being housed. I can't even call it housed. Like but, box, uh, kept, boxed, out, kept outside. Boxed yeah. in, in hay with these neck collars that pretty much immobilized them. And I don't think anybody thinks of a pit bull's primary function as being a hunting dog. And um, so... We, we made some changes to the bill. We got a lot of people, the Potter League, the RISPCA, some hunters, and we know that there are bona fide good hunters who take good care of their dogs. So we're giving the animal control offices in the individual cities and towns some discretion to make a judgment about, you know, is that hunter mistreating his dog? So this bill is to make sure that animals who are not hunting dogs are not left outside in adverse conditions. Correct. So you and I could raise Shih Tzus, for instance, and call them hunting dogs and keep them all outside. And the animal control officer couldn't do anything before this bill to make us take them in. Well, we use them for hunting. So that was the purpose of this bill. So now it's got some teeth. It's going to the Senate going side. Going to the Senate. Uh, Sarah, Senator Erin Lynch Prada has the bill. I think she's as passionate as I am. The Senate president, as you know, just got a national award from the Humane Society, so I know he's an animal lover. And there's a couple of other things we have in the hopper, too, because people love their animals. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to go through the legislation with us. Again, it was sort of the big news this week as well. But as always, appreciate getting your perspective. I enjoy it. And you have everything as you're in your role as House Oversight Chair. So. And I'll, I'll have more to report after next week. Kate. Very good. Thank you. House Oversight Chair, Trisha Serpa, appreciate you taking the time to come Thank on. You, Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with our next guest here at the Rhode Island State House. Okay. And I'm